I, I definitely am seeing a move to back up by physical assets, but quite honestly, unless it can be actually converted into those physical assets, mm -hmm. what does backing mean? It, it, it doesn't mean anything. It, 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 it's about getting you comfortable with it. And um, I definitely do think that Bitcoin, everybody knows my opinion on this. Um, I don't, I just don't think it was a coincidence of its timing when it came out in January of 2009 versus when quantitative easing came out in March. So I do think that it's a, a Trojan horse, so to speak, because you've got to get adoption. And the way that they make these transitions from one to the other is by keeping things appearing to be as normal as possible. Lynette Zhang begins by highlighting a critical point. The financial system essentially died in 2008. According to her, everything since then has been a setup for the next big crisis, with the banking sector showing signs of significant vulnerability. She questions whether recent outages are mere updates or tests to gauge public reaction and prepare them for future disruptions. Are we unknowingly part of a grand experiment to condition us for a future financial crisis? Lynette emphasizes the necessity of holding cash, particularly in situations where digital systems fail. She points out the irony in the push towards a cashless society as recent outages have shown the critical need for cash. Her long-standing motto, if you don't hold it, you don't own it, underscores the importance of having tangible assets like physical gold and silver as a second line of defense. Why is cash still king in an era pushing for digital transactions? Zhang paints a grim picture of the banking sector, describing it as dangerously fragile. Despite banks passing stress tests, she argues these tests are inadequate and misleading. The accumulation of zero interest bonds and other debts makes the system extremely vulnerable to interest rate changes, with even slight rate hikes pushing many assets underwater. As we navigate through an election year, Lynette suggests that we might get through the elections before a major crisis hits. However, she warns of the buildup of risk akin to an avalanche waiting for that one last snowflake to trigger a disaster. The concentration of risk in larger banks globally further exacerbates the situation. Zhang discusses the global financial system, pointing out how risks are not confined to the S. She draws parallels between China's banking sector and the S, noting the common strategy of absorbing smaller banks. This global trend is concentrated risk, making the entire financial system more susceptible to shocks. Are global financial strategies leading us towards a universal economic collapse? Lynette touches upon the overvaluation of markets, including real estate, she warns that lowering interest rates, a move celebrated by Wall Street, will not solve underlying issues. Instead, it will exacerbate the vulnerabilities, leading to a more significant crash when it happens. Are we living in a bubble that's about to burst? Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview. But first hit the like button, smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. The system is really dead already. It died in 2008. And so all of this is really a setup and, and especially what I'm seeing right now, particularly in the banking sector. Yeah, this is absolutely a setup for the next crisis. And I'm not convinced that some of the stuff that's going on, like uh, the IT outage or what have you, is that a test? Right? Is that about getting people comfortable with the outage and just seeing how, what the reaction is? And, and I don't know, that could just be an update, but it clearly shows people, in my opinion, that number one, you cannot get rid of cash because when the systems don't work, they'll work. And so there are signs up cash only, but wait a minute, they wanna take us full digital. So that's a problem, but we're also seeing that my old saying, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Mm -hmm. So your first line of defense is cash. Your second line of defense is your barterable physical gold and silver in fractional form or in basic form outside of the system. And yeah, I mean, that should be clear to everybody now. I don't know that it is, but it should be. I don't necessarily think that Donald Trump as a president is an absolute given. So we'll have to really see who ends up in that position. Uh, I do personally have a lot of respect for Judy Shelton. 
uh, and her position on a gold standard. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as that's concerned, now, do I think that it's going to happen this year? Look, I'm going to tell you, the system is so darn fragile that it could happen at any moment, regardless of what those in power want. There are way too many things that are going on in the fintech area, in the in the ability of the bigger banks. I mean, they're they're they, none of them pass their living wills, even though all of them passed the stress test, which was a joke. So it is an election year, and and under normal circumstances, I would say that we will probably get past this election before any major crisis evolves. And I certainly think we're very, very close. But, but again, what we don't know is what is that one teeny piece? It's like an avalanche, right? You get all of this buildup of snow, build up, build up, build up, build up. And then it's just one little teeny weeny snowflake that then creates this massive avalanche. And I'm seeing this major buildup of risk and danger inside of the entire global financial system, whether we're talking about China with all those banks being absorbed by the bigger ones, which is the same thing that we've been doing here, right? I love how they always point fingers. Look at what they're doing, what they're doing, what they're doing. Yeah, gotta look in the mirror. We're doing the same darn thing. And so what that's really done everywhere in the world, frankly, is concentrated the risk. And because we are in an ample reserve regime, um, the banks don't have the reserves. And hey, they all pass the stress test. So hey, let's buy back more shares. Let's send out all sorts of dividends and send that money out of this very vulnerable banking system that is so flipping underwater going back to the interest rates, right? Let me just grab my little chopstick here. You know, for those viewers, just as a reminder, these are interest rates. This is the market value of the bond. And when they push those interest rates up, all of those uh, 15 years of accumulation of bonds at zero interest rate, as well as all of the other debt, the mortgages, the car loans, everything is significantly and severely underwater. Okay, so when you talked about the pivot, right? I mean, what Wall Street is like applauding and going to even greater overvaluation levels, even though these markets are at the highest value, valuation levels ever, real estate at the highest valuation ever, well, let me tell you, when they do start lowering those rates, whether it's September, October, November, next year, whenever it is, it, mm -hmm. it, it won't be a good thing. The, the central banks are between a rock and a hard place because when they do with already overvalued, overinflated markets, you know, a tree does not grow to the sky. It just makes everything a whole lot more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you that it's going to be Tuesday morning at 835 when this whole thing implodes, but it could be. You, you got to be prepared. And when do you want to know about it? And when do you want to get prepared for it? I can sleep at night because my portfolio is prepared and I have food, water, energy, security, barterability, which for me is silver and, and food, all of this food stuff behind but um, wealth preservation for anything that you're choosing to hold in the system, as well as community has become arguably, again, the most important factor because we just don't have that luxury of time. When you ask me when, I don't know when, but I can tell you, I don't like what I'm seeing. It's all the earmarks of the next crisis. And last week, and it's still going on, could be a test or could push us in. And, and if all your wealth is held in the system and the system goes down, well, that's a pretty good excuse for saying, nope, can't have your money back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It didn't work, traders went home. Oops. Despite the uncertainty, Lynette advises being prepared. She shares her own strategies for safeguarding against a financial collapse, including holding food, water, energy, security measures, and barterable items like silver. 
She emphasizes community support and having tangible assets as key components of survival in a crisis. How prepared are you for a financial meltdown? Lynette discusses the importance of physical gold and silver in preserving wealth. She criticizes digital assets and stresses the need for assets that can be converted into tangible goods. Zhang points out that while some countries are moving towards asset-backed currencies, true stability comes from holding physical assets. Is gold the ultimate safeguard against financial uncertainty? Lynette notes the increasing geopolitical instability and public uprisings against governments, a sign of waning confidence in political and financial systems. She believes this trend will continue to grow, further destabilizing the financial landscape. Are we witnessing the beginning of a global financial revolution? Finally, Lynette urges viewers to convert fiat money into sound money, like gold and silver. She believes this is a crucial step in protecting oneself from the inevitable financial crash. She also highlights the growing divide between East and West regarding financial strategies and the challenges in gaining public trust in new systems. I, I definitely am seeing a move to back up by physical assets, but quite honestly, unless it can be actually converted into those physical assets, what does backing mean? It, it, it doesn't mean anything. It, 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 it's about getting you comfortable with it. And um, I definitely do think that Bitcoin, everybody knows my opinion on this. Um, I don't, I just don't think it was a coincidence of its timing when it came out in January of 2009 versus when quantitative easing came out in March. So I do think that it's a, a Trojan horse, so to speak, because you've got to get adoption. And the way that they make these transitions from one to the other is by keeping things appearing to be as normal as possible. And that normalcy kind of changes over time if you just step back and think about what things looked like in 2007 or even 2019. Um, and, and I bring up 2019 because at that time, and th this goes into the Trump trade as well, we had the rise in populism, right? With on a global basis, uh, people rising up political unrest because they're losing confidence in those that are in power and in their monetary system. And it was interesting because I just did a piece on it. So I looked at it and I pulled data uh, from a little bit more than a year ago, May 23rd of 2023, where there were 400 geopolitical um, incidences with the public rising against the governments. And guess what it was as of June 27th? 700 of those same geopolitical instances. So this is the public rising up against the politicians and against the system almost doubled in a little bit more than a year. That, when I saw that, first of all, I was shocked. And second of all, there is a revolution that's happening. I mean, it is happening and it's the public rising up. And that's why I talk about a quiet and peaceful revolution Mm -hmm. It's by converting what they can create at the push of a button, fiat money, government debt-based money, that's what it is, that yeah. they can value and do at will, just convert that garbage into sound money, physical gold and physical silver in your possession. Mm -hmm. It's key. And do it sooner than later, because what are you waiting for? Yes, they are doing a lot more with, with asset backing and the BRICS. I mean, we are definitely seeing a divergence between the East and the West. This isn't a new one. This is one that's just been growing and growing. Um, it'll be interesting to see, though, because every single country has a gold revaluation account. And every single country right now is drowning in the debt to create this garbage. You know, when we're looking at Zimbabwe, I think Zimbabwe is showing what's going to work and what's not, but they still are having trouble with adoption because you really can't take the gold out of the system. And quite honestly, they've made it at least 
up until the last time or at the point where I looked at it the last time, which I look at that pretty regularly. So unless something has changed just recently, mm -hmm. still can't convert it, which means that they can say anything they want. And they certainly do, not just in Zimbabwe. I'm just talking about governments and central banks in sure. general because their job is to regain that confidence of the public. That's why they're doing the gold, right? I mean, that, that's why. And right. they brought out the physical gold coins for those that could afford it. The rest of the population gets the digital gold. They are building their gold reserves. So it, it's, I'm just watching because honestly, until they can get the population to trust the currency and the system again, They've got bupkis. And for me personally, I wouldn't trust it until I can walk in with this or even any digital asset and walk out with this because this is your ability to do that is what creates that fiscal responsibility. That, that's what does it. And so the fact that they can all, and I mean all governments, all central banks have that gold revaluation account they've already put in place those overnight resets, right? This is Zimbabwe's sixth currency. So they tried the other way, didn't work. Now they're trying this way. And from what I can see, yes, they are pushing it hard, um, but I'm not sure that they're getting the, the adoption that they're looking for yet. That, that remains to be seen. I know I wouldn't trust it until I could convert it to this.